speaking with a uh, composer, Rich Vreeland, uh, who is better known as Disaster Piece. Uh, Rich was behind the fantastically original score to David Robert Mitchell's It Follows, which was the talk of the town when it premiered at Sundance. And now it's gaining amazing critical acclaim as it just had its wide release uh, in theaters everywhere. Rich, thanks so much for uh, taking the time to chat today. I found the score to be such an awesome fit and wonderfully unique uh, in today's horror landscape. So it's such a pleasure to chat with you. Oh, well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, so before we, we dive in uh, to It Follows, I would love to know how you kind of got into music and, and what prompted you to get into, I guess, scoring for visual media like uh, games and films. Well, I uh, grew up in a musical household. Uh, my, my mother played the piano and sang, and my sister is a singer, and my stepfather was a music director at, uh, at our church, so I was uh, around music growing up. Um, but I, I didn't actually get into it until high school, and I started playing guitar and um, uh, slowly started writing music um, and uh, uh, went off to, actually went off to school to study graphic design for a year, dropped out because um, I found that I was more interested in music and um, awesome. started going to music school and um, around the same time, you know, I'd, as I had started writing music, uh, I started posting it online and um, and just sort of randomly, I, I posted it on, on a forum looking for feedback, and one of the people that heard it was somebody who ran a company that made cell phone games. And uh, he liked my stuff and asked me if I wanted to score some, some of their games, and I said yes. Um, I actually didn't know that that was even a, a thing that was, uh, you know, that that was a possibility to, to write music for games and stuff. So wow. um, it, was, uh, it was pretty cool. That was when I was about 18 or 19, and... It's been about 10 years since then and just kind of been uh, continuing to find cool projects to work on. So were there any particular kind of uh, artists, composers, or genres of music that kind of influenced you when you were growing up and that you really kind of latched onto? Yeah, I was, uh, I was big into classic rock and uh, progressive rock, mm. um, especially as a guitar player. Uh, you know, Led Zeppelin and uh, Tool and Rage Against the Machine, um, King Crimson, uh, yes, stuff like that. Um, it's definitely like playing a lot of riffs and right. lots of distorted guitar, that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so where, where did uh, Disaster Piece come from? What's the meaning uh, behind the name? Yeah, when I was like 18, I uh, was trying to come up with a band name and um, was playing with words and came, came across Masterpiece and kind of flipped oh, okay. it into Disaster Piece. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, how did uh, director David Robert Mitchell, you know, first, I mean, how did he approach you for this project? How did you get involved? And then, how did he kind of, those first conversations you have with the director, how did he describe it to you? Well, David emailed me. He, uh, he had played Fez, this game that I scored back uh -huh, in uh, right. 2010 to 2012. And he really liked the music in that game. So, uh, he reached out to me and wanted to work together. And, um, uh, kind of the first thing that he did is he, you know, he sent me his first film, The Myth of the American Sleepover, which I think there's some there's some uh, overlap, but um, you know, it is a pretty pretty different film. And then he sent me the the script for It Follows as well. Um, so he didn't do a lot of explanation, I, I suppose. It was more like you know, here here's what I'm working on, and you know, what do you think, and are you interested? And um, you know, I think it's it's always interesting getting a script. Um, it can be a bit hard to visualize, yeah. you know, how how that's going to come out. Uh, you know, um, but uh, having seen his previous film, you know, I had a feel for what the characters were going to be like. And you know, I think especially given the nature of the dialogue and and the characters, um, you know, it it has to be done by the right person who has the right feel for it. Otherwise, it could it, you know it might it might feel a bit flat. Right. Um, so um, I definitely took a, a leap of faith with it, and um, certainly glad that that I did. So I mean, did you did you start writing anything before you saw any like a, a rough cut of anything, or did you wait till you had something visual to look at to start writing from? Um, I I actually don't think I if I did write anything, it was not it was pretty minimal. Um, I, I one of the first things I did is I sat at the piano and tried to come up with some horror type type stuff. Um, and actually the first thing that I wrote uh, I thought was pretty great, but um, it didn't end up finding a place for it in the movie because, you know, a lot of times, you know, you have an idea and it, it, it might, 
it might resonate with the character or the essence of something, but it doesn't have a function right. uh, to, to, to play. So, you know, I wrote this piece of music and I just didn't feel, it didn't feel right. It didn't, it didn't fit into any of the scenes in the film. So, I mean, when you, when you did finally kind of got into the meat of it, what was the kind of musical goal? You know, what did David want from the music and what did you want your music to do with the narrative? Yeah, I mean, we, we wanted the, the music to play a big role in the, in the film, for sure. Um, and I think the, the film, uh, the way that the, the film is set up is that David left a lot of room for me as a composer to uh, express myself and, and to um, complement the, the somewhat understated feel of the film. Um, and then, uh, you know, as far as, um, what was the other part of that question? I'm sorry. How, I mean, what did what did you want your? Uh, what, I guess what are the musical goals? You know, what as, as a horror film, I guess you're you're you know playing around with certain genre archetypes. But this is you know very. I found the score to be very almost uh, never, didn't really fit into the mold. So I think were you trying to uh, make it something that didn't kind of follow in the normal footsteps of like the genre? I think it would be hard for me to follow in the normal footsteps because I didn't. Uh, I don't. I don't really have a. Uh, a strong familiarity with horror films or horror music, uh -huh. um, so I think my my guiding one of like my general guiding principle with that was more just you know what um, you know what is my cultural interpretation of what horror is and and trying to just kind of just uh, shoot, shooting from the hip almost right. um, just just going on my own feelings about what that is and then taking that and combining it with the the reference material you know the, the temp score that that uh, David put together um, which was very you know discrete pieces of music that had very specific you know uh, energy levels and and tones to them um, so the end result is kind of a culmination of um, kind of winging it Mm -hmm. And uh, using using some pretty strong reference material, um, yeah, that's that's kind of how it, how it ended up happening. <laughs> you know, we didn't have a lot of we didn't have a lot of time, so we we kind of had to improvise. Right. But. I mean, it it does have kind of that old kind of John Carpenter Assault on Precinct Thirteen type of vibe. I mean, is it is it a challenge? Was it a challenge to work off of something that he he clearly was referencing kind of older grindhouse maybe type stuff from the seventies um, to incorporate that into your I guess soundscape was it kind of hard to create your own voice when you were trying to reference other stuff? No, it was that wasn't hard. What was hard for me was actually trying to create new stuff when I was referencing my own material, uh -huh. um, because because David used a bunch of music oh, okay. from Fez and the Temp Score, oh, okay. and and um, you know one one of my tenets. Uh, as a composer, is I'm always trying to do something new for myself. Um, you know, I, I I try not to retread old ground, and um, you know, David developed a pretty strong affection for the pieces from Fez that he was using in the temp score, so that became a bit of a challenge for me to try to, you know, take those pieces and um, you know honor honor what David liked about them, but do something new, something fresh. And what I really loved about the score is that I found there was a lot of kind of uh, motifs and melodies and, and rhythms that were kind of, you know, layered throughout the electronic textures and everything. And when you're building kind of an electronic score like this, are you, are you creating the sounds first or are you creating kind of the, the structure and the rhythms first? What, what comes first? Do you create the, the base of what the, it's going to sound like and then apply it to the structure or you kind of get the piano melodies going first and then take those sounds and kind of adapt them to that sound? It was a little bit of both. Um, it kind of depended on the cue. Some of the more melodic stuff um, I, I wrote at the piano. Mm -hmm. um, and m pretty much all of the horror stuff was more like flinging paint on a canvas, um, you know, coming up with crazy sounds uh, or, you know, laying maybe laying down a groundwork like for, okay, what's the what's the structure of this piece, you know, we, we, we want to have these like hits, you know, that, that kind of underline these certain things and then taking that idea and then, you know, just like a painter, like, you know, just putting more and more colors on top of that. Um, so yeah, it was a little, it was a little bit of both, you know, some pre, and the whole thing is, is I would say is very premeditated because we had such a, a strong, in my opinion, we had a really strong temp score right. that really laid out the structure of most of the pieces 
and gave me um, a lot to work with as a as a composer about you know um, how you know how is what is this going to look like and you know having having like a really strong sense of the structure of the entire score before before I even wrote music um, you know that that helped me a lot in uh, expediting stuff and you know we we definitely like we definitely played with the structure a bit and did some new things as we were working on it and made some decisions about, you know, oh, we should add some music here or we should, maybe we shouldn't add, have music here, etc. But just having that, uh, you know, that David and, and his editors took the time to do that was, was really helpful for us. And, I mean, it sounds like the temp score was such an integral part here and usually composers will, you know, go to the grave, you know, trashing and, you know, attacking temp scores for, you know, making them stick to something. But I feel like here it was the complete opposite. It really did give you kind of a, a structural base to work off of, right? Yeah. I mean, and I think, um, I think part of the frustration with temp scores when composers is, um, that, you know, the, the temp score you know, and the director might like the temp score for having a certain aesthetic or using a certain instrumentation or a certain style that the composer might not be able to, you know, it's not really what they do and, or, or it's not, you know, it's, it's not part of their identity as a, as a composer. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that can be, that can be difficult. I think, I think it requires the right relationship between the composer and the the director in order to use a temp score and have it be an okay thing. Absolutely, um, yeah. No, yeah, I've heard yeah, complaints from composers where the director is just kind of stubborn and stuck in his ways, but I guess when you have a collaborative kind of relationship, it really does make the big difference. Um, but uh, just looking at the score as a horror score, I mean, what, in your opinion, do you think a horror score or at least did you try to make this music scary? I mean, what kind of was the emotional goal here? What did you want the music to do to the audience while they were watching this film? Um, I definitely, you know, definitely trying to evoke emotions as one does with music. Um, a lot, you know, in the, in the scenes that are not scary, that are more about, you know, there are scenes that are more about the characters or more about the, the scenario, you know, whether it's uh, an establishing a character or kind of a transition from from one section of the film to another section, um, uh, you know, there was, hmm, I mean, yeah, there are a lot of different kinds of scenes that I think required different different approaches. Um, you know, there there are big big sort of uh, showdown type scenes that have really loud, crazy, bombastic music mm -hmm. that's kind of supposed to be frightening. There are other scenes that are more about building up uh, suspense. Um, you know, for, there's some kind of big scare around the corner. Um, and then there are, you know, there are scenes that are, uh, that are more psychological. Um, you know, they don't have, uh, you know, there's not a direct confrontation with, with, uh, with the antagonist there's not you know there's it's not leading up to some kind of scare or something it's more about you know okay the characters are freaked out or they're waiting or you know some, something is going on that's uh, you know that's messing with them and you know what does that sound like? Right. No, that's what, and that's what I loved about the score. I thought there were so many layers and it wasn't you know kind of a, a what you see is what you get kind of surface uh, score and I think it really uh, this is such an integral part of it. So I mean, I really thought it was to make it, it made itself stand out. <laughs> Sweet, thanks. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, you also had this uh, really cool style thing that you did. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of like a the music kind of sounded like you know when you turn a speaker up and it kind of gets distorted. You kind of put that like a, a layer of that throughout the score, right? Kind of. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you do? You, how do you do something like that? Like how do you add that to to the music? Is it just a a, a an electronic effect. Yeah, it, it's a it's an effect. Um, it's funny that you mentioned that because in the beginning I had that cranked to like eleven, uh -huh. and and uh, the mixing engineer that I worked with, he was he was concerned that people would think that uh, their their speakers were broken or you know the theater speakers were broken. Yeah. So you know we talked about it a bit and we ended up um, we ended up dialing it back a, a bit oh, wow. for that for that reason. But I mean, the way that that effect works is basically you send, 
you you send all, you know all all these tracks through. Um, I was using a, like a tape saturation unit um, that has a certain kind of distortion to it. You know, you send all your tracks through it, and then when it reaches a certain threshold, it starts to deteriorate yeah, right. and then has this kind of gnarly sound. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was really cool. I like that a lot. <laughs> um, but uh, just kind of looking at the, the genre as a whole, do you have any favorite horror films that like really stand out to you? Any horror scores that kind of, uh, even if recently or, or from the past, any classic ones that you kind of like, all right, these are my favorites? Um, I haven't, you know, my, uh, like I said, my familiarity with horror is super limited. So um, I definitely, I don't think I have a favorite horror film. Um uh, I'm I'm a big fan of Goblin. I like I like their music a lot. Um, you know, I would say, like I saw Under the Skin last year, and that's not really right. I don't know if that's really a horror movie, but I really liked the the treatment, the the, the music treatment, and everything about that that film it was really cool. Yeah, that, very one of the more unique scores of last year. People were definitely talking about that one too. Yeah, yeah. And uh, before we wrap up, I do like to ask composers uh, this one question: If you could score any film ever made, pretending the original score never existed, uh, what film would you choose? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what's what's a playground that you would love to play in? Uh, damn, that's such a hard question. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I almost feel like I almost feel like my like me personally, I. I try I try really hard to not be possessive of the music that I write, uh -huh. and um, I think part of that for me is is not wanting to redo you know do some do something that someone else has done and, and think that I could do it better. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know if I can I don't know if I can give you something for that. Okay. Honestly, it's just funny. not something it's not something that I think about. You know, it's like oh I wish I was the one who did that. Like is I just. Is I'm just like, oh, it's totally cool that <laughs> it exists already and someone else did a good job. I don't have to worry about it, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, of course. Maybe uh, a genre. Is there any genre that you would love to attempt? Like, uh, do you, like, go completely, maybe complete opposite and be like, oh, yeah, I'd love to do a romantic comedy, you know? <laughs> What's something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think at some point I'd love to work with more live musicians, um, you know, whether that's in an, an ensemble setting or something bigger. Um, right. That's definitely something that I'd like to explore at some point. Cool. Well, uh, Rich, thank you so much uh, for your time today. It's been such a pleasure chatting with you and, and getting to pick your brain. And I really uh, enjoyed the score. And congrats on the films. I mean, it's getting I mean, amazing acclaim from everybody. So congrats on that. Thanks. We're, we're pretty stoked. And uh, hopefully we get to do this again sometime in the future. Sure. Sounds good.